but he says, you know, professional historians and the one he cites here do something different, right? So they they point out the bad stuff, right? But he says he, they mention the truth quickly and then go on to other things, you know, more important, right? So outright lying or quiet omission takes the risk of discovery, which when made might arouse the, the reader to rebel against the writer, right? But to state the facts, however, and then to bury them in a mass of other information is also not good, right? And so that's, so what he's saying is, is like professional historians have acknowledged, uh, you know, the bad things that happen in history, but then they don't really provide a reckoning with them or the way they tell that story, right, as, uh, you know, as between um, people with power and people who are victimized by power, right, in a very sort of a brief way, right? He says that's that that's it's not as bad as not saying anything, but it's also a way of sort of missing the point and sort of burying the argument. So that's what he wants to uh, get around, right? Um, and that um, you know that's what he's going to do, and that's what he talks about in his you know theorization here, right? And so I've marked some of the places where you know he really gets you know right to it. Um, and says exactly what he wants to do, right? Um, right? And here he says, you know, basically the idea, right, uh, of what he wants to achieve here. So, you know, I'll leave it to you to read there. You know, it's just, I've highlighted the facts there, and, you know, and so I'll leave that. So if you want to write, write about his methodology, you definitely want to concentrate in Chapter 1 and also on Chapter 21, because that's where he'll He'll talk about that, right? So I'm not going to go into uh, discussion of, of everything that I highlighted here because I think Zinn is very straightforward <coughs> and very clear. So it's not like reading Gilgamesh or Marx where you know it's uh, you need you need to, some help with that. I think so. I'm just showing you some of the passages here in Chapter One that you know you should be. Uh, aware of or which you can find some purchase and can develop your ideas or you use as quotes uh, in your seminar number two. Okay, so uh, moving ahead here, right, uh, through chapter one, right, and again, you know, he does get into, after he does his introductory stuff, his methodological stuff, he does come back to the Native American story. So if you do want to write about Native American history, right, you definitely want to deal with chapter one the second part of chapter one, and then definitely chapter seven, okay? And so that brings us to the next chapter.